temporal bone anatomy part 2 that is the mastoid part of the temporal bone the mastoid part of the temporal bone is more thick and lies below and behind the squamous part of the temporal bone it contains the following structures an external surface an internal surface a superior border a posterior border and a conical downward projection called the mastoid process Next up we have the external surface. The external surface along with the external surface of mastoid process bears the following attachments from above downwards. Number 1 the sternocleidomastoid, number 2 the splenius capitis and number 3 the longissimus capitis. Close to the squamomastoid junction there is the attachment of the following two muscles. Number 1 the occipital belly of occipital frontalis and number 2 the auricularis posterior. A mastoid foramen is usually found in this surface. This mastoid foramen bears the following structures number 1 an emissary vein and number 2 the meningeal branch of the occipital artery this emissary vein usually connects the sigmoid sinus from that of the posterior auricular vein here we have a diagrammatic representation of the temporal bone the sternocleidomastoid the superficial temporal vein the posterior auricular vein and the occipital vein Next up the internal surface. The internal surface of the temporal bone bears the sigmoid sulcus that bears the sigmoid sinus. The floor of the sulcus is separated from the mastoid acids by a thin plate of bone. The superior border. The superior border is serrated and articulates with the lower one third of the parietal bone. The posterior border. The posterior border articulates with that of the occipital bone. Next up, the mastoid process. The inner surface of the mastoid process has a notch that gives attachment to a muscle that is the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. Inner to this notch is a groove through which runs the upward course of the occipital artery. The mastoid part is not found in newborn babies. It appears around the second decade of life. When the baby learns to pull his or her head upwards, it is then that the pull of the sternocleidomastoid gives rise to the mastoid process. According to the distribution of air cells within the mastoid process, the mastoid process can be classified into the following three types. Number one, the pneumatic type, that is bears full of air cells, the sclerotic type, that is full of bone marrow, and the mixed type, that contains both air cells as well as bone marrow. This is the diagrammatic representation of the groove that bears the upward course of the occipital artery in the mastoid process. That concludes our slide on mastoid process. Next up we have the tympanic part of the temporal bone which is to be described along with the auditory canal. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching our video.